What is the carnivore diet and what is the vegan diet? So first off, the carnivore diet is what it sounds like is you're only eating meat products, you're not eating any plant products whatsoever. So you're just going to be eating meat, pork, chicken, fish, etc. And no spices on it at all. It's only salt is what you can use when you're following the carnivore diet. The vegan diet is the complete opposite. It is that you're eating no animal products whatsoever, including eggs and dairy products, and you're only eating plants. So you're eating nuts, seeds, vegetables, fruits, grains, etc. So when do I recommend a carnivore diet and when I recommend a vegan diet? So I recommend the carnivore diet to the patient that comes into me that is having a lot of allergies. They're like, whatever they eat tends to cause them to feel really sick. They get bloated, they get constipated, they get diarrhea, or they eat it and they get really inflamed and their joints really hurt, or they feel like they're kind of drunk or they can't think very well, brain fog, etc. And we're really not able to find, we do like a food sensitivity panel on them and we remove those foods and they're still having problems. This is when I go to a, the path is like, okay, we need to just clear out all these uh, lectins or these other food constituents that are in there that might be making your immune system go crazy. And we're just going to eat meat and that's it. We're not going to eat all these other things. And that tends to take away most of the allergens and it gives the gut a rest. It's a great gut reset. And this can really calm down the immune system, all the allergies, and people could start feeling really great when we're doing this. I also recommend this for some of my autoimmune patients when their immune systems are just way out of whack. They're reacting to all kinds of foods. I do recommend the carnivore diet sometimes for this population group also. So when do I recommend the vegan diet? The vegan diet, I especially recommend the most for my cancer patients. I recommend both a plant-based ketogenic and a plant-based diet, depending on what type of cancer the patient has. And I make sure that it's a nutrient dense vegan diet when I'm prescribing it for cancer. Obviously it's not high in refined sugar. It's not high in refined grains. It's nutrient dense foods, nuts, seeds, non-starchy vegetables, low calorie, low sugar fruits, et cetera, for my cancer patients. So that's usually I recommend that. I even recommend the vegan diet for some of my autoimmune patients too. Some of my patients don't do well with meat. It's too inflammatory for them, with the saturated fats that are in there. So they do well with the vegan diet. So autoimmune disease, you got to go to the right doctor that knows the nuances and knows the questions to ask to know what diet is going to be best for them because there's just not one diet that's perfect for autoimmune disease. So yeah. So that's what I was prescribed these diets for. So what can you do wrong following the vegan diet or the carnivore diet? So let's start with the vegan diet. I like to call it the junk food vegans. These are the people. And I think probably majority of vegans are in this realm. I'm sorry, vegans. They are usually just pounding the grains. They're eating a lot of grains. They're eating ramen. They're eating donuts. They're eating a lot of white bread and they're not eating much fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. And they're definitely not getting enough protein. They're not usually watching the amount of legumes that they get. And it's very nutrient poor. It's like the worst diet you could imagine because they're not getting enough protein. They're eating a lot of inflammatory foods. So that is a huge problem. So just being plant-based doesn't mean you're being healthy. I think there's a trend going on right now from all the documentaries that are out there talking about meat being this bad guy and they're following a plant-based diet and they're like, oh, I'm eating my bread. I'm eating my ramen. I'm not eating any meat. I'm not getting the bacon in and I'm being healthy. I would say that's actually worse than those people that are eating bacon do and things like that because you're getting so much junk. You're getting a lot of pesticides, herbicides, tons of sugar, and it's just going to wreak havoc on your body. So that's one way you're going to go wrong with that. You want to eat a vegan diet that doesn't have a lot of starches in it. You can eat starch, but you want to eat a ton of leafy greens, non-starchy vegetables like leafy greens, kale, spinach, broccoli, cauliflower, etc. You want to eat a lot of these type of things, good amounts of blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, nut seeds, especially hemp seeds and chia seeds and even organic peanuts and peanut butter and almond butter. These things are all great to really have a good, healthy vegan diet. And with the carnivore diet, so you could definitely do that wrong too. I mean, you're going to eat probably better quality food in general because you're taking away all kinds of different foods. You're only eating meat. But if you're eating just processed bacon, processed sausage, 
you're not eating free range beef. You're eating just uh, conventionally raised corn fed beef, or you're eating tons of pork in which they're just feeding them tons of corn, or you're eating a lot of fish that is farmed. This is going to be very inflammatory food that you're going to be eating. And it's not going to be good for you. Now it's going to remove a lot of the allergens, but you're going to get all this gunk that's coming into the meat. So you want to make sure that you get free range chicken and you get grass fed beef and you get fish that's actually wild caught in the ocean that actually has omega-3 fatty acids. Unlike the farm race, it doesn't have any omega-3 fatty acids. So yeah, that's how you want to follow the carnivore and vegan diets. Yeah. So what is the better diet following the carnivore diet, the vegan diet? Are there any nutrient dense, any issues with following the carnivore diet with nutritional values or the vegan diet and nutritional? Are you going to be missing certain nutrients that are in your diet? So with the carnivore diet, let's say you're following a really nutrient dense carnivore diet. You're eating it just right. You're going to get about 80% of the nutrients that you need in a 2000 calorie day following just that diet. So many times you're going to be very deficient in fiber because you're not getting any fiber, if any, from meat. You're going to get very little, if any, vitamin C, vitamin K, and you're going to get very little amounts, moderate amounts. You're going to get more of this, but it's still low amounts of magnesium, potassium. So these are very important nutrients. Now you're going to get a good amount of all the other nutrients and it is good, but you're going to be deficient in these type of foods. So even if you follow a really great nutrient dense carnivore diet, you're not going to get all the nutrients you really need to be able to live a long, healthy life. So why does it matter that you're deficient in these certain vitamins like vitamin C and vitamin E and K and fiber, magnesium, potassium? So why do we need them? So all our cells depend upon magnesium, especially 300 different mechanisms happen in our body. So how our body makes hormones, how our body makes enzymes, how our body makes amino acids, how our body makes energy all depends upon magnesium. So if we don't have enough magnesium, our body's not going to function optimally. And most of us, even if you're following a good diet are deficient in magnesium. So if you're following the carnivore diet, you're going to be much more deficient than if you're following a good nutrient dense vegan diet. Potassium too. Potassium is needed for us to be able to sell, send signals in and out of our cells. So every tiny little signal that happens in our body needs potassium to be able to send a signal appropriately because it needs to be able to send a electrical signal from our nervous system to then send a signal somewhere else. So if we don't have enough potassium, our body's not going to get the right signals. Also, our fluid balance is going to be off because that's managed by our electrolytes, potassium. So magnesium is in there, sodium and chloride. But if we don't have enough potassium, that's going to be all wonky. And we just talked about magnesium. That's going to mess with that also. Vitamin C, that's very important for us to make collagen production. So if you want to keep good, healthy skin and you want to keep good, healthy joints, you need to have enough vitamin C. If you don't, you're not going to make collagen very well. Also, your immune system is going to be weak because we need vitamin C to be able to get the guns to be able to fight off uh, foreign invaders that are coming in. Vitamin E is a very strong antioxidant. It's for our redox system. It also helps thin our blood. So you're getting an idea. These nutrients are very important and it's not just one small thing to be deficient in these nutrients. So what are the effects that the carnivore diet has on cancer? So I never recommend the carnivore diet for cancer. When we look at the studies on cancer and we're doing epidemiological studies and we're actually trying to pinpoint what is the right diet for people that have cancer or prevent cancer, meat is always high up there and eggs is especially high up there. I know a lot of people following the carnivore diet don't eat eggs. Sometimes they do. Most of the time they don't if they're really following the true carnivore diet. But here's the thing. The carnivore diet is really high in saturated fat and we have the higher intake of saturated fat. We do see an increased risk of getting cancer. Also, we see that there's insulin growth factor elevations with meat. Great for building muscle and becoming really strong. But if you have cancer, that's going to promote growth of cancer cells. Also, some of these carnivore diet could be high in choline, and this could promote certain cancers like prostate cancer, especially And prostate cancer, especially is bad with saturated fat choline, and insulin growth factors. So it's a horrible for prostate cancer. It's also not great for some of the most common ones like breast cancer, colon cancer also. So yeah, never recommend the carnivore diet for uh, cancer, so to speak, but I do recommend it for a lot of other things like, like we discussed. So let's say you're following a vegan diet that's nutrient dense, 
So even if you're following a nutrient dense vegan diet, you're only going to get about 75% of the nutrients that you need in a 2000 calorie diet. So you're going to be 25% deficient in certain nutrients that you need. The main nutrients that you're deficient in is you getting very little, if any B12. I've also noticed that a lot of women, especially tend to be low in iron and you get moderate amounts of zinc and majority of B vitamins. So yeah, you're going to be deficient in a lot of things. If you just solely follow a vegan diet, even though you're being very nutrient dense, but that doesn't mean that I don't recommend this diet. And sometimes, and we could do it appropriately and we could supplement appropriately to be able to have the success we need. But if you're just following this diet, you got to be smart about it and do it appropriately. So you actually get enough nutrients in there because you're, uh, like I said, you're not getting any B12. B12 is needed for our entire nervous system to be able to work appropriately. So you can start getting fatigue or neuropathies when you don't have that. Or you could start not thinking very well. You get memory lapses when you don't have enough B12. Iron is needed for us to be able to send appropriate oxygen uh, throughout our body. It's what binds to oxygen in our hemoglobin. So is the vegan diet good for people that have gut issues? Yes and no. There's definitely people that are going to do very poorly on the vegan diet because it has all these different constituents in it. A lot of different lectins, a lot of different proteins, a lot of different enzymes, et cetera. So it's very broad. And people that have immune systems that are kind of out of whack or they have a gut that doesn't have a right amount of good bacteria, or it's really inflamed, it's going to start reacting to these foods. Also, there's certain fibers that are found in the vegan diet that let's say if you have like SIBO, for example, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, they're going to feed on that and cause a lot of fermentation and cause a lot of gas and bloating. So yeah, following the vegan diet definitely is something I don't recommend for some people that have gut issues. It's not always a problem. You got to go to the right doctor that's actually able to decipher if the vegan diet is right for you. But I do notice people that do tend to get a lot of gas and bloating or diarrhea. The vegan diet can be an issue for them, but it can be good for you if you actually treat the causes of what's going on. And then maybe you could get on this type of diet. So yeah, what real diet is the GOAT? Which one is actually going to give us all the nutrients that we need to be able to have a long, healthy life? The one that we want to follow is the omnivore diet. Guess what, guys? We are omnivores. We were made omnivores. We are not a cow. We're not supposed to just eat plants. We are not a lion. We're not just supposed to eat meat. Now, there's certain circumstances that we eat these ways. We talked about these certain circumstances, but for the majority of the population that wants to eat a nutrient-dense, healthy lifestyle, they want to follow a nutrient-dense omnivore diet. And what does this entail? Let's talk about like a healthy plate, just to make it easy. So you want half of your plate for dinner to be non-starchy vegetables. So that is spinach, it's kale, it's cauliflower, it's broccoli, etc. These type of foods. And then you want fourth of it to be starchy foods. So that can be your grains, that could be your beans, that could be your potatoes and yams. And then the other fourth is the protein sources. That can be your wild caught salmon, your grass fed beef, pasture raised pork, etc. So that is the healthiest diet that you can follow. It's going to be extremely nutrient dense. You're not going to be deficient in anything and you're going to get better bang for your buck. What I mean by that is, okay, you're eating this amount of calories. How many nutrients am I getting? If you're just eating a lot of white bread, guess what? You're getting high calorie, but you're not getting a lot of nutrients. So it's not really doing a lot for you. You might be like, oh, calories give me energy, but you need all the nutrients to be able to function appropriately. So yeah, that's the best diet that we really want to follow. We want to follow high amounts of plants with a little bit of meat. We want to make a main source of our food coming from plants, good quality, healthy plants that don't have herbicides, pesticides, all the gunk with them that are uh, nutrient dense, that aren't just a lot of process. And then we are eating meat as a side dish, not as the main dish. It's like we aren't just going to make, oh, dinner tonight is a huge steak with a little baby salad. It's a little steak with a tons of salad, for example. That's the healthier diet. Yeah, so where would fat fit in on the plate that I just described? So that can go anywhere in there. I mean, you're going to get the fat from the meat, obviously, but you also could add olive oil, avocado oil, butter, whatever. You could add that on your starches. I like to put it on many of my veggies. I love olive oil and avocado oil and some salt. A majority of the vegetables I talked about, like the broccoli, the cauliflower, the green beans is really great too. All in that category, you could add 
uh, those oils into there. And we didn't really talk about fruits, right? And we didn't talk about nuts and seeds. These are things that I put as snacks. So you add nuts and seeds uh, as the day goes on, you add uh, fruit and nuts and seeds. And I like to eat those together because you don't get these big spikes of blood sugar. The, the nuts have the protein and the fat to subdue some of the sh- sugar spikes that happen from the fruit. So that's where we get those nutrients from the fruit and the nuts and seeds in between our meals. Yeah, so if you want to get a hold of me, visit my website, integrativemedica.com. Find my phone number there. Give my receptionist a call. You can set up a visit with me or some of my other great doctors. You could also set up an appointment directly online. And we also do virtual appointments. So you don't have to come into me in person. You can see me all over the world. If you want to learn more about the Blue Zone diet, carnivore diet, or vegan diet, click my videos to the right. I'm Dr. Jake, and I'll see you there.